running the office leadership series. In today's session, we will be discussing the changing nature of workspaces and what the future holds for the world of work with our esteemed panelists. As you all know, the current crisis has certainly changed the way we approach work across the globe. Going ahead, a work model that offers both flexibility and a choice to employees while sim simultaneously giving organizations the agility they require is likely to be sustainable for the long term. Today's webinar will be moderated by Amit Ramani, founder and CEO of Office. I would now like to introduce our panelists for the session. Let me first welcome Ashish Mehrotra, who is currently the Asia Pacific Head, Real Estate and Facilities for Microsoft. A corporate real estate leader, he has successfully managed organizations and has led internationally dispersed and multicultural teams spanning across Asia. Ashish has also headed the corporate real estate unit in many large organizations across multiple countries in Asia, with emphasis on long-term growth, sustainability, aligned to business needs. A warm welcome to you, Ashish. It is great to have you with us today. Thank you, Sumit. The next speaker for our session is Bhavya Kapoor, Managing, Managing Director, Southeast Asia Wipro, an expert in business strategy, digital transformation, new revenue streams, and partnership development. He previously headed Wipro's communication and manufacturing business in the Asia Pacific region before uh, leading Wipro's East Asia business. Bhavya is also a part of Wipro's leadership team in Asia Pacific, Middle East, Africa, and India business, and is a strong proponent of diversity and localization. Welcome, Bhavya. We're excited to hear your thoughts on the topic. Thanks, Sumit. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, probably I'm the only uh, person who represents business and with very little understanding of real estate sector, but I'll try and give my perspectives. Perfect. We're looking forward to your thoughts. Okay. Up next, we have Ajay Parashar, Head Administration, Publicist Group, India. Ajay is an expert administrator with vast expertise in areas of operations management, event management, team management, and market research. He also comes with extensive experience in the marketing and, and the advertising industry. Welcome, Ajay. We are delighted to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you, Sumit. Moving on to our next panelist, we have with us Sunit Agarwal, Director Finance India, Head Corporate Real Estate, DXC Technology. Currently managing the DXC real estate portfolio across global innovation and delivery centers in India, Philippines, Vietnam, and Eastern Europe. He also leads the business finance function for DXC's GIDCs, a finance and operations executive with 20 years of experience in areas of finance, operations, strategy, and real estate. He has also worked across renowned companies like ITC Limited, ICICI, Dell, and Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Welcome, Sunit. Looking forward to hearing your insights. Thank you so much. And last, but not the least, we have Ravi Ahuja, Head Commercial Leasing, uh, LNT Reality. Ravi has worked with esteemed organizations like Colliers and Cushman and Wakefield, and is an industry leader in the field of real estate space with over 20 years of expertise in major roles of multidisciplinary transactions and advisory for occupiers, investors, developers, and government, encompassing office, retail, residential, land, and industrial asset classes. Welcome, Ravi. It, it is great to have you on the panel today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and contribute. Thank you. Over to you, Amit. Thank you, Sumit, for the introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the webinar. I'm really excited to moderate a panel of Indian and Asia experts today. Uh, a year and a half of alternate workplace paradigms has prompted organizations across the world to reimagine their <laughs> traditional work models. With vaccination drives and lifting of restrictions, most companies have started thinking of bringing their employees back to the office. While remote working comes with its several benefits, it also has its own share of challenges, with its long-term viability still a major concern. In fact, Office recently conducted a survey of over 1,000 plus respondents. 74% uh, of those participants said that they were unsatisfied with their career advancements related to remote working. 70% said that team management, collaboration, and networking is best done when they are in the office. And a whopping 82% of the professionals said post vaccination, as long as the companies give them flexibility, they want to come back to office. The key question now for the RE leaders is how can organizations, while redesigning their operational models, ensure a sustaining balance of safety, flexibility, cost efficiency while managing employee expectations? Let's discuss what lies ahead in the future of work. Why is it necessary for companies to restructure their work models with our esteemed panelists today? With the first section, occupiers leading the charge 
and defining the future of work. Uh, looking back last year, uh, first half of 2021, saw many corporate occupiers adopting the new work models and the work cultures. The sudden shift to remote work has fundamentally changed the definition of work with occupiers exerting increased influence on the world of work. The widespread adoption of remote working, work from home, is likely to lead corporate occupiers to adopt an agile way of working in the coming years. Ashish, starting with you, uh, you are an industry expert with 25 plus years. I know personally you have led workplace transformation in the past at Airtel and now do so at Microsoft as well. Um, how do you think the occupiers have reinvented their real estate portfolios to meet future office space requirements during this pandemic? Hey, thanks, Amit, for asking this question. So I think, first of all, yes, definitely uh, COVID has uh, changed the way we're looking at our uh, future real estate strategies or even our space planning. And if you talk about future workplace design, I think everything is going to be impacted uh, with, with, with whatever we've seen in last 12 to 18 months. And if you if you look in the past, uh, what were the key factors which were the main drivers for our real estate strategy, right? Pre-COVID, we always used to, let's say, look at uh, business growth was a key driver for our strategies, headcount forecast, right? Uh, the, the workplace demand and always location, 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 right? Location was always very critical to our strategy. I think uh, moving forward, I, I'm not saying that these are not going to be critical. These will still remain critical to our decision making when we, whenever we're deciding on strategy. But uh, what COVID has changed, I believe, is that uh, it's not going to be the same linear way of decision making going forward. I mean, there are going to be a lot more new factors which we'll have to consider in our strategy. And I think to start with, definitely we all know that uh, hybrid is a new normal, right? So when we are looking at our future strategies, I think we, it, we need to build I believe much more agility in our portfolio and services planning uh, moving forward because of the new hybrid workplace culture. Uh, the second thing, which I think from our perspective, what I see is <coughs> uh, we have uh, seen a lot of focus in the past on consolidation, on large campuses, building our brands, moving into larger spaces. I think that is where I, we're going to see a shift. I think in future going forward in the portfolio strategy, we're going to look at focus on decentralization. And that's that's one thing, big change, which you're going to see moving forward. Uh, I think uh, one more thing which you see, uh, which is very evident to all of us is that focus on safe environment, safe workplaces. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that all of us will agree that uh, as corporate occupiers also, we are also questioning our landlords a lot on the safe workplace environment, ensuring the COVID safe measures in our buildings. And uh, this is going to continue. I mean, whether it is safe entry to the buildings, whether we talk about air quality in the buildings, where we talk about touchless access, we're accessing the building without touching uh, touchless elevators, basically anything which can reduce the transmission. And this is going to be a key criteria, I think, moving forward, which is a new criteria, I would say, when we look at our future workplace uh, planning or strategy and uh, lastly if i believe that the future of the workplaces are going to be used more for collaboration more for innovation more for learning and development maybe lesser for uh, focus work so i i think there is definitely a need for looking at uh, maybe revisiting our design guidelines, revisiting how we're looking at uh, our, uh, how we've looked at previously our spaces to just see that how we enable these experiences moving forward in our offices. All, all, all great points, Ashish. Uh, uh, moving on to you, Ravi, I think uh, clearly you bring a very interesting perspective. Uh, in the past, I know you worked with the IPC, so you understand occupiers really well. And today you work with a large developer um, so with many corporates emphasizing on employee safety, specifically flexibility, do you feel that the demand for traditional long-term spaces has been affected? Uh, Ravi, I think you're on mute. 
Am I audible now? Yes, yes, please. Yes. Sorry for that. Thank you. Uh, Amit, clearly uh, the demand for long-term office space has been impacted. Uh, having said that, we do see this demand coming back. But let's for a moment step back and just see in the last 18 months uh, from the pandemic now being vouched to become an endemic. So the journey seems to be quite long ahead. Um, I think companies uh, have realized and over the last 12 to 18 months, uh, when we speak to our clients, what they need to do is something they've realized is to bring a strategist on board. When you talk about workplace strategy, there's too much of floating information, but strategists, what they bring to the board or to the stakeholders of the organization is clarity and customization as to what the organization stands for, both in terms of their operations and on the larger piece in terms of their culture. So these are aspects which I feel will impact going forward. Uh, when you talk about culture, I mean, clearly, um, you know, whether it's viable to have options with respect to sections of the workforce in terms of the functions that they do. When you talk about operations, can we as organizations or occupiers, when we talk to them about space allocations, especially when it comes to CapEx expenses, which developers are now incentivized to consider doing, is really understand from the customer, the occupier here, that they would like to bucket these activities. And when you say bucket, really speaking, uh, what the pandemic has really done is really made sure that we've become remote workers for sure. Uh, it started with that, and now it's about how many can come back. Is there a bucketing of an activity or a function that permits 100% remote work? 50% coming back and collaborating with teams or 20%. So these are some things that, you know, workspace strategists need to sit down and understand what the organization is about. Uh, and every industry, for example, will have a different set of uh, output uh, to the same questions. For example, in a manufacturing industry, clearly, if you differentiate between workers on the shop floor, that can create a big rift. Uh, so, you know, one has to also be sensitive uh, to those kind of, uh, you know, occupiers who have uh, R&D labs or, you know, egoistic type workers, be it manufacturing, etc. Uh, then again, uh, we're seeing um, a theme, which you call it a theme, but, you know, the gig workers, the contractual workers, we're seeing organizations now becoming more and more open. And the latest NASCOM survey also suggested that almost 60, 65% of the organizations may be open to uh, hiring gig workers for different set of functions. And that would really mean a set of workers that are flexible, agile, not necessarily coming to uh, you know, work or affecting cost at workspace for these companies, and yet giving a very high productivity and output. So I think these are few of the factors that we feel uh, are impacting. The other thing, I think we spoke about somebody being from Singapore here, he can certainly share his perspective. But when we talk about office occupiers, or office take up, a clear majority of it on the multinational side happens from the American corporations. Between 45 to 55 percentage of the India office take up is due to thanks to them. Uh, there is a talk uh, and it's now been published that US may see a reduction in office take up for sure. But especially when it comes to India, we may gain at least not necessarily in the temporary year, year and a half. But beyond that, we will certainly gain from the excessive offshoring and jobs which may not now be hired there, but straight away be hired here in India or some of the emerging markets. I think, uh, and, and all of those are hard aspects on the soft aspects, uh, clearly, what's in vogue is about well-being, about you know making sure that the environment uh, you're going to bring it into the office is more an outdoor look, an outdoor feel. Uh, you know, we heard someone talk about uh, designing aspects and the change that we'll see in the designs going forward. Uh, you know, the the importance of lighting, ventilation, and all of that. Uh, so occupiers, I think, right at the board level, 
are very busy and it can take six to seven months, sometimes 12 months for them to understand as to how these things are evolving because it's going to be a journey going forward. Yeah. Great. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Ravi. Uh, Bhavya, as you rightly said, you bring a very different perspective, non-real estate, uh, more of a business perspective. Uh, so with the gradual shift in the world of work with focus on, on balancing culture, employee experience, how have you observed occupiers uh, putting their needs of their workforce at the forefront while adapting to the changing conditions across work? Thanks, uh, Amit, um, for bringing this up, and um, I'll get to it in a minute. But I would want to use this forum to um, first encourage everyone to get vaccinated. Um, I think it's very, very important, um, and a lot of it will depend on uh, mass vaccinations. And we've seen uh, uh, the effect of it in the US already, right? Where 70 plus percent population is already vaccinated. So I would encourage everyone. Uh, who's listening to this to get vaccinated as soon as possible. Um, you know, if you look at um, what has happened over the last 18 to 24 months, um, the world of workspaces has changed forever. There is a continuous change um, that will follow, which means that businesses would need to not just adapt, but adopt to their workforce and workplace strategies. You know, occupiers today are now placing employee well-being sustainability ahead of everything else while optim optimizing their workplace, while designing their workplace uh, to reap benefits of the hybrid environment that we are in. You know, I'll give you an example for um, in Singapore where I live and work. There are directives from the government uh, where safe distancing, tracking, sanitization, et cetera, are mandatory, which, uh, were, which was not the case, um, I would say, two years back, if we would have had this conversation two years back, we would not even be talking about contact tracing, safe distancing. So these are you know, unique terms that are getting added to our um, dictionary. So, um, and I believe that going forward, these would be the bottom of the pyramid um, in the Maslow's hierarchy, right? So this would become a ticket to do business, so to say, right? Um, now, you know, and there are blurring boundaries between work and home. Uh, all of us on this webinar are, I'm assuming, and I'm 100% sure at our respective homes or at a place which is not office, right? Um, and this is OFF, not AW office, right? Um, you know, this, is, has a, this has a huge social impact. It impacts not just the individuals who are involved, but the entire ecosystem, the families, the societies, the communities at large. So, you know, today um, employers are thinking not just about individuals, but the surrounding ecosystem, right? How do we ensure that the employees are engaged in our business, which is people intensive business, right? Uh, knowledge workers, while we can have people working from anywhere and everywhere. How do you make sure that their, the engagement levels are high? Right, especially when um, you're working at home, which is not designed to work. Uh, so that's another implication. You know, large-scale digitization has enabled work from anywhere. However, its implications on employee well-being, challenges associated around the same, are now being considered holistically by employers. I think data and tech um, will ease these barriers. Uh, will uh, help people to work remotely but uh, this would evolve over a longish period of time. For now, I think um, the entire focus is to make sure that uh, um, people continue to work, the economy must go on, and it is also important to work in a secure environment because when you connect remotely, uh, the these cyber threat um, surface significantly increases. And I believe um, you know, organizations like yourselves, Amit, have a role to play in this, right? Because you offer an alternative to home, which could be secure, which could offer all the benefits um, of working remotely and um, getting the productivity out um, in the open um, through nearby working spaces and co-working spaces. Th thank you, Bhavya, for the, for the plug on the co-working spaces. Uh, but on a serious note, on the vaccination front, 
100% of our team members at office are vaccinated. In fact, office led close to about 10,000 plus vaccination for its members as well. So very serious point and I think uh, a, a very well made point. Um, Ajay, moving on uh, to our next question. Obviously you have extensive experience in administration, leading and managing uh, teams across various locations. According to you, uh, will sustainability, flexibility and wellness be the core tenets for successful office environments of the future? Thank you, Amit. Um... While I'm not an expert, but whatever I've read so far, it brings out some bit of conclusion that COVID will be a part of our lives now. From pandemic, it might change to the endemic, but it will remain with us now. Which means that the workspace has to be agile, set up which can be folded and unfolded as per our demands. Also, some of the drivers of workspace will change forever. In my opinion, sustainability, yes, definitely be one of the prominent tenants. We'll have seen how work from home has resulted in huge reduction in travel and other OPEX cost. Reports poured in from all around the world of the significant environmental gains being made from dolphins returning to Italy's waterways in air quality in California. Many companies are concerned not to undo the good work that has happened during this 2020-2021. And they are committed to finding a way which can be more sustainable ways of working. For example, encouraging people to do cycling or by going by walking to the possible, reduce waste to recycle what they can to have a better environment. The secret of building a truly sustainable world workspace, however, it is to choose well-made furniture uh, that will last, uses healthy materials, is composition and flexible enough to adapt at any eventuality. Flexibility will shift uh, from location to time, while enabling employees to work remotely become commonplace across the world and which will continue for the next couple of years and beyond. The next wave of flexibility will be around when employees are expected to work. So the office space will have to be adjusted to meet these requirements. Support team might have to come in shifts to cater the different needs as the working hours. On wellness, my point is rightly that said by the other people also, the staff returning to office will definitely want to feel safe in the office. They would want that the office should be hygiene. It is safe environment. They will appreciate changes like increase in airflow. Perhaps some will even want that key if they have a UV satellization, proper hand sanitization, touchless technology to be adopted in the office, flexible desk layout model, redesigned and, and, and appropriate distinct a distance to be maintained in the office space. The pandemic is a traumatic experience for all and working through it from home and has led to widespread of burnout. Companies can help with these effects by offering wellness and other meditation programs, paid subscription to mindfulness apps, exercise facilities, and opportunity to social engagement, which fosters a greater sense of well-being all around. In our company, we have also have started a PubFit program, whereas we have not even engaged people by giving them the PubFit kit to make them unhealthy, let them do exercises. We have also been running a lot of programs online where we, every week we come up with special um, kind of uh, engagement with them on exercises, on well-beings, um, even not only till the well-being, we are even giving them the um, classes on having healthy food and all those stuffs. So wellness has been one, one thing which has been, um, companies are opting more. So I think this is what we are. Sure, sure. Thanks, thanks, Sajay. Um, Sunit, uh, with your years of experience across IT uh, and uh, expertise in corporate real estate, do you think the future workplace design is going to be more technology and IT oriented post the crisis? Oh, yes, absolutely. And, and thanks for that. Uh, I think that's a great point to look into. Uh, I think what has happened in this short span of last 15 or 20 months that we've seen this, right, is an acceleration. So an acceleration of what some of us have been thinking, what some of us has been working and what some of us has been trying to implement. Acceleration in terms of hoteling, for example, has always been a concept, right? And even in larger organization, you always have some sort of a space where you use hoteling. Of course, it varies by business, but what the pandemic has done, and now, right as rightly said, it has become an endemic, right? 
that is accelerated so earlier lot of consulting type of organizations you know you can talk about pure play consulting or you can talk about consulting within the it gamut of activities would use hoteling but now practically hoteling has been looked at as 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 a given in the business right now what that leads is is definitely a design and a location question so i'd like to add location on that as well right because i'm just trying to pick up like ashi said that there is some amount of decentralization as a strategy and i think that is where uh, you know even larger organization while scale continues to be important for us you know for example occupies like us you know we occupy close to 6 million square foot in some of the countries that we operate out of right i'm not talking global i'm just talking about the low cost or emerging geographies or the global innovation and delivery centers as we call it in india itself we occupy close to 4 million square foot of space right now that space will definitely undergo a repurpose and redesign that is going to be inherent it has to be more collaborative it has to be more tech immersive because what we all need to realize is that you know like bhavya said security is going to be of paramount importance but collaboration the way we do it today and the way we are doing it for the last 12 months will also undergo a change in our opinion right in the next 12 or 15 months when the vaccination rates are up when people start working out of offices we really need to figure out how does a true hybrid work today i mean let's take this seminar as an example right that we have 250 people everybody is on the same platform of zoom everybody is remote listening and you know we are looking at each other but in a true hybrid workspace think of a team which will be sitting in an office and there are seven team members which are in office and then there are three which are not right which are sitting out of an home how do you redesign your space to make it immersive to make it an extension right so your platforms like a zoom or a team you need to have spaces within our offices which will be you could call it teams rooms for example you could call it immersion rooms for example right the the ability to conference and collaborate will be one up right if you if we had if we say for example if for every 1000 employees we had one video conferencing setup maybe we need to have a video conferencing setup for every 100 employees i'm just taking up a number so so the, the nature of spend that we do the nature of prioritization that we do and the way we look at our offices from a collaboration safety and well being perspective definitely undergoing a change so in fact globally we you know we've been looking at driving some of this change internally and you know we've been working with some leading consultancy firms globally to see how our spaces of the future going to look like uh, that's, that's that's great uh, sunit uh, i think uh, clearly one thing is very very apparent out of uh, all the perspectives that our panelists shared is that change is imperative right uh, so let's move on to the next section what's the impact of the changing perspective of the occupiers and the cre stakeholders right decentralization of workspace is likely possibility with many firms favoring a hybrid model although physical space uh, are still necessary for even for remote working or work near home uh, drawing back from our survey 72% of the respondents favor a hybrid work model um, as an occupier workplace requirement keep evolving it has become important for cre stakeholders to take on board the occupier's perspective and deliver accordingly Uh, so bhavya let me start with you uh, what are some of the positive trends you have witnessed due to the shifting occupied demands so um, i think there are positives and the biggest positive i see um, is uh, availability of new talent pool which was uh, not available earlier right today you can be working from anywhere in the world uh, and someone spoke about the gig uh, economy right uh, and still be productive this has a real potential to add a substantial portion uh, in active workforce which was not visible earlier the other positive i would say is um, and a workforce that will be more inclusive and diverse so i feel that this is one positive trend which will gain momentum uh, and has gained momentum but it will gain further momentum second flexibility in work arrangements Uh, i believe this is an opportune time for 
for all of us to look at our social contracts right so there will be greater flexibility uh, obviously um, cost and environmental aspects um, there is a positive trend uh, around that to look at cost structures around real estate uh, look at the environmental aspects um, of working from offices commuting uh, i'm i have always been a big believer of um, what i call commute less and communicate more paradigm so which is a reality now you know i used to take a flight um, every week or a few flights every week uh, until about 18 months back um, but this is now a reality you know um, that all of us have not taken a flight at least i haven't taken a flight for a long long time which obviously has an impact um, on my carbon footprint as an individual so things like that i think innovation in the cre sector um, which were laggards in the tech in tech adoption uh, right is imminent right from the way construction is done to remote viewings to space management to contact tracing to analytics driven behavioral anal analysis of occupiers right so there will be greater adoption of tech um, in the cre sector and these trends are here to stay i believe uh, also there is greater emphasis on mental and physical health be health of individuals working um, and this definitely will lead to a more agile uh, workspace environment so they, these are trends that i believe amit are here to stay no oh, great great points uh, bhavya um, ashish so how important is it for cre stakeholders to structurally reimagine their strategies in the present scenario so amit i would say i mean if i look at the conversation so far i think everybody has talked about flexibility agility so i think one thing is very clear that uh, our employees people want flexibility and people want uh, autonomy right uh, and i i mean we all know that uh, last 18 to 18 months or 12 months of the covid uh, pandemic it's there are very clear evidences that we can be productive working from home right so that is there is no doubt there it's all clear and we talked about like so many companies and have done so many surveys and i think most of the uh, surveys which have been done indicate that uh, people would like to uh, retain some aspect of uh, remote working when they return to work right and that is something which is very clearly coming out and i think as all all first cre professionals we have been challenged during this process first of all there was a challenge we had uh, to a sudden shift to a largely remote remote workforce right and then now we have a challenge of that uncertainty where when people return to work uh, what are they going to expect right it's still uncertain we still don't have the complete answer yet and i think people are talking about it but i don't think we have the right answer yet but i would say that the biggest trend which we are seeing is definitely it is uh, the uh, shift in the working patterns right people are going to return to work but maybe people are going to return to work for lesser number of days in a week right and also what's important for us to understand that when are they going to return to work what are they going to return to work for and i think we all have heard in this uh, panel also that they going to return to work for collaboration they going to return to work for socialization they going to return to work for learning and development brainstorming decision making all of the things which are harder to do when we are working from home right and uh, i think that's that's where i think that we going to see in next maybe 2 years 3 years we don't know how much time it's going to take we going to see physical spaces uh, in our offices which are different from what we currently see and i think uh, sunit you uh, mentioned about uh, immersive spaces right they going to be people working from home they going to be people working from office but i think what's going to be critical is that a person who is working from home is going to have the same experience compared to a person who is working from office it's going to happen eventually right technology is going to take us there so it's going to happen that's very critical and uh, uh bavia you talked about talent right I th and i think what's going to happen also is that uh, this this requirement of flexibility with people are asking for 
organizations are going to use this uh, for talent retention and hiring and uh, if let's say if as a comp if your competitor is providing all the flexibility and you're not able to then where is the talent going to go it's obvious right so i think those are the challenges which we are seeing currently and as an organization i think we are all trying to work towards what is the most efficient solution we don't know yet but i think that's that's what we are working towards great points uh, ashish uh, ravi so obviously you heard uh, ashish and bhavya they are clearly talking about a change uh, in terms of space in terms of how this design uh, so how are large developers such as yourself shifting their focus to increase efficiency and keep up with the changing requirements uh, of our corporate occupiers so thanks and if i if you permit me amit i'll just digress a bit on the stakeholder piece and connect it with this particular question because developers are a bigger one of the you know primary stakeholders in the in the industry fraternity but uh, you know while the cre stakeholders and we've heard a lot from the uh, you know panelists reputed panelists who are representing the occupier side clearly i would like to say one of the major stakeholders while they may be in or outside cre is the employee himself and uh, there's one key change why i feel uh, that there is return to work which is imminent is uh, the difference in the indian culture versus the western culture uh, you know in the western uh, countries we see far more discipline you know far more um, amenable environment to convert uh, you know work from home uh you know kind of bring in the infrastructure that is needed uh they may have larger homes or whatever in the countryside etc but i think uh indian families especially the ones which are joint family driven they they do have a lot of um concerns about the breadwinner or the bread earner working from home as it's infringing their privacy uh besides that of course if you are a nuclear family you can you can make that work i think families are a bit unhappy from an indian context and uh there are other reasons why you should work from work uh coming back to how we see as a developer uh being one of the stakeholders and uh, what we're doing clearly amit in the last 12 to 18 months uh every now and then uh, you know when there's a recovery mode happening our pipelines in terms of requirements from occupiers have gone up um and by the time we reach a stage where we are able to convert uh the client wants to just wait a bit more so i think uh holding space for them is one primary um uh, you know uh, responsibility we feel because they may eventually come and they've kind of conveyed to us uh you know that they would like to take the space but they want us to hold as the requirements are getting deferred Uh, and maybe sometimes the sizes are getting changed so in that sense we give them the flexibility it's costing us money uh, you know every every absence of a rent every month is certainly costing us money so in terms of flexibility it's cost uh, but it's how we can scale them up or scale them down again becomes important and that's where part of our portfolio we may be open to also considering uh, you know flex operators or partners uh you know to come and provide this kind of flexibility because every developer not necessarily wants to get into that service mode himself uh and then the final uh you know piece is really uh conservation of cash which has been the continuous theme since the pandemic hit us is the capex and that's where the flex operators again uh, come in and provide uh you know as innate part of the model uh you know that they cover in terms of capex uh so clearly i think it's also the work experience of it uh, the developing uh you know b grade or b plus grade facilities or i think we uh, lost ravi um a, a bit of a challenge when you know we're working from home uh so let me uh, move move on to uh, sunith while uh, ravi joins back uh, so sunith according to you what strategies can help accelerate the success of cre stakeholders like traditional office space owners co-working operators and brokers going ahead i think in you know there are there is short term and long term right in my opinion i mean uh, short term flexibility i think if you look at 
any large organization across the globe, right? If I speak to my peers across the industry, you know, of course, uh, you know, folks like Ashish, for example, if you have a large R&D population, you, you can't change your labs overnight and you don't want to do that, right? Similarly, you know, I think uh, somebody mentioned that, you know, you're running a workshop. I, uh, Ajay was mentioning that, right? If you're running a factory, you have to run that shop floor. But when you are in, where, when, when you are a, you know, for lack of a better word, a more white collar kind of a workforce, which essentially operates out of office for all CRE developers, professionals or occupiers, I think the short term outlook is flexibility. Today, when I take up an office space, you know, say I plan for 10,000 and Ashish earlier in the conversation was mentioning that headcount forecasting was a big driver, right? Headcount forecasting is still not changing. Hiring is still not happening, right? If you look at markets like India, in the IT services space, attrition is up. People are hiring left, right, and center, right? You know, so so hiring is still going to happen. Even companies like, you know, if I take my organization as an example, we have grown, right? We have made, we have hired a young for you know, campus graduates of about three and a half, four thousand people. We're going to hire another seven thousand people. So that is happening. But what 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 we are looking for is flexibility in the short term. You know, like Ravi mentioned that you have cash is king, right? Right now you want to preserve cash. So that, you know, that applies for occupiers as well. You wouldn't want to get yourself logged into a nine-year lease for a, a large square foot of space, which you know you are undergoing optimization through, right? So flexibility is key in the short term. In the longer term, it will be redesigned in experience. How these experiences changed in the future, right? So how much collaboration is brought in? So look at co-working for an example, right? If we were the same group, if we were in, if we were talking say five years ago, co-working was not such a big force as it is today, right? We did not even have so many players. We didn't have so many options. Co-working was a rethinking of how it should work Similarly, for all developers, it will be a rethinking of how the space design and space experience has to work. So, so shorter term flexibility, longer term redesign, some element of flexibility still needs to remain. But I imagine that as we learn to live with this environment, I think some amount of flexibility will return back to normal terms that we have today, right? But then the whole redesign and experience has to change. Uh, Ravi, any points? Um, uh, you got disconnected. Any points? You yeah, want my apologies. Um, <laughs> it's the, the technology piece. But coming back, sure. I think just a couple of points, Summit. I don't know where I got cut off, but uh, clearly from a developer perspective, I don't speak only for myself. We do a lot of A grade, A plus grade kind of development. But I think those who are developing B, B plus grade have realized that it's the work experience and the employees are really on the focus here. So it's it's about time that, uh, you know, uh, companies will move the value chain from B or B plus grade to A plus grade, uh, you know, facilities because they want the employees to have the work experience. And more importantly, also how space is allocated. For example, we do a lot of campuses and it becomes easy for us to therefore uh, cater to efficiencies or services or amenities. Uh, or sometimes also fit for purpose when we see 24 by 7 ops or operations across, you know, uh, midnight operations. Uh, it's that's that's the time when campus facilities feel far more safer and the kind of amenities that we can offer. So I think as a developer, these are a few things uh, I think the community should uh, should clearly gear up. Uh, on the investor side, who are also stakeholders, I think the vacancies are going up in the short term. Uh, that's a big uh, set of concern. The REITs, uh, you know, the, the listed REITs prices are showing that. Uh, so they, they are major stakeholders who will, uh, you know, for the temporary piece uh, be affected. But yeah, these are something on the stakeholders I must have missed. Thanks. Great, great. thanks Ravi. So uh, Ajay, with uh, companies planning a gradual return to offices, what according to you will be the way to go, traditional or flex and why? So I think more than the organization, it is the employees who will determine the way to go. Also, I'm assuming that this issue is relevant only for those business who could afford giving work from home to their employees. After more than a year of working from home, 
most workers are really finding it hard to adjust to going back to the office. These are people who have relocated, moved away from the metros areas in search of more space and value. Some have gone back to their native places. Secondly, there is a fear of coming back to work. Thirdly, a survey in the US conducted by Flex on about 200, 2000 employees who have been working from home lead to finding where 50% of the employees said that they will look for a new position if they have been asked not to work from home. Hence, in my personal capacity, I feel that traditional RTO will take some time to happen. It will take time for employees to be confident on their safety and readjust to getting back and to commute to work. It will be flexible openings where in need-based people can come to office and collaborate. Also, business have evolved in last one year. A business like us, which is sharing ideas and collaborating, since I come from publicists, we have also worked beautifully working remotely all this while. There are a lot of pitches and new business which we have won. And let us not underestimate the impact on savings, keeping the office closed. So keeping all these factors in mind, the favor of flexible working is improves work-life balance. Also, the companies are aware of these savings and they know that the balance work, workplace balance has been working out well. I think people will favor more flexible option now. Great. Um, so that gets me a good segue into the next section. Uh, you know, so how flexible workspace operators are poised to support the new normal. Um, clearly, we heard on this panel that you know uh, the co-working category didn't exist, the flex space category didn't exist uh, till a few years back. Clearly, there is a move towards it. Uh, Bhavya mentioned it, Sunit mentioned, Ashish mentioned. Um, so it is no surprise that the way we work has changed maybe forever. We are witnessing a steady rise in demand of flexible workspaces with an increasing number of multinationals and businesses investing in co-working or shared workspaces due to the sudden boom of agile working. Um, flexible market is poised to grow by almost 10 to 15% annually over the next uh, few years. Uh, companies are clearly looking for agile workspaces, flexible lease options. Uh, it has become necessary for flexible workspace operators to anticipate the occupier needs and advance leverage the robust and cost-effective technology, as well as collaboration tools to create productive workspaces of the future for them. Uh, so Sunit, starting with you, uh, we are seeing a global shift towards agile and innovative workplace solutions. How can flex operators uh, capitalize on this and generate demand successfully? I'll, uh, you know, while I think, uh, you know, Amit, honestly, you know this better than I do, right? Uh, you know, you are the leader from the industry. But having said that, I think uh, the one of the word that we used was work near home, not work from home. So I think the flex office industry is poised to capitalize on work near home concepts. Maybe, maybe you know, it will depend on what segment of uh, occupier that you want to look at. But large scale occupiers, uh, you know, who say, you know, who, say, who have say 10,000 employees or 15,000 or 20,000 employees, they would still have large collaboration hubs and campuses. But a lot of mid tier mid-tier occupiers, so to speak, right, you know, would definitely look at optimizing the work near home. So for example, if, if, if I am a mid-tier occupier, I would be very interested, let's take an example, right, I'm working out of Bangalore, right, and I have, say, 3,000 or 4,000 employees in Bangalore, and today I was housing all 3,000 of them in, in an X space, right, at whatever ratio, et cetera, that we use. Tomorrow, I know that out of those 3,000, 1,500 on an average would be working from anywhere at that point in time, right? So I would want to figure out how do I recalibrate my space that my collaboration is only meant for, say, about 1,000 odd people, right? But the 2,000 odd people, how can I make work near home? So, so more communication, like Bhavya said, less of commute. In, in cities like Bangalore, commute is a huge challenge. So I think that is one opportunity. The second opportunity is how does co-working spaces, you know, how, how can they bring in flexibility? Like the enterprise solution providers, a lot of us are 
enterprise solution providers i think that is the way to go right i you know even if i tomorrow say you know ravi is you know ravi is a developer out here and i want to sign up a space a large quantum of space with ravi and ravi of course would be backed by fund houses and there are so many puts and takes that a developer has to go through so and i i said that i need flexibility and that is where co working flexibility come into place you become an enterprise solution provider i mean that's happening across the industry today it's nothing new but i think that will be a, there will be a shift and there will be a significant chunk of those kind of deals in the market right my my propensity to sign up and fit out a complete office space on my own on fixed terms for the next time years would be significantly lesser than to take up a space which allows me the flexibility of upscaling and descaling on choice right so so i would definitely look at that i think those in my head you know there would be certain other ancillary you know amenities and how do you look at safety how do you bring in sustainability how do you look at you know all the pandemic related uh, you know filtration mer filtration i know you know some developers have been talking about mer filtration as a selling point there could be so many other selling points but i think from a deal making perspective those would be two areas which would be positioning uh, you know which would position very differently in the market than what it was earlier certainly great uh, point sunit uh, specifically for uh, the flex guys uh, uh, ravi you mentioned clearly there is a future of the developer and the you know the flex operator working together to survive in and thrive in the new normal how do you think that the flexible workspace operators should realign their business models uh ravi you are on mute sorry again so one of the biggest opportunities amit is is for the flex operators is really this whole uncertain period right the corporates are going through uh, on one hand some of the corporates are locked in for probably next 2 years 3 years on the other uh, this year seems to be the highest when you talk about uh, the number of renewals that seem to be coming in the marketplace uh, now what that does in terms of renewals is really uh, gives flexibility to corporates to for the time being pause uh, you know uh, optimize their cost by probably surrendering some spaces which we're seeing bits and pieces happen uh, in cities like mumbai bangalore and the ipcs have given their reports are published um and for the time being while they're working out the strategies they want to clearly go with a flex operator uh, who can give them temporary yet um flexible space to scale up or down as the case may be depending on the speed or the acceleration of the recovery Uh, given the vaccine spread and so and so forth um i think this is a great window to put your foot in uh to a lot of new relationships uh you know which will probably some of them will you know fall by eventually go on their own way if they are rich in cash eventually but many of them will stay back and uh, it depends on how you want to nurture the relationship with them uh, clearly offer them from a temp or temporary solution into a more medium to long term solution Uh, you know from a co-working or a, or a small number of seats uh, to a more uh, or or a mini managed office type of a loca- you know uh, solution to a more mid scale or a high scale a kind of a solution when it comes to enterprise or managed offices uh, so clearly i think uh, the two or three things that work in your favor is uh, giving them the flexibility to scale up or down uh one and two is really the conservation of cash that each and every of these corporates even though some of them may not need to they are cash rich but they still want to conserve cash and your inbuilt model of uh, you know capex uh, you know which is part of your per seat cost or whatever you work out with them uh, is that's where your services that's where your margins are so i think it gives them right now the need is there uh, majority of them are wanting to see uh partnerships blossom uh and maybe you may have to take a hit here or there initially with that relationship but if the brand is big uh the brand is big and you get to uh, if the brand is big and you get to partner with them in the longer term i think it's a great opportunity to put your foot in the door sure great great thanks thanks ravi ajay according to you how can operators deliver a higher better experience of working that meets the new corporate demand 
So there is no denial in the fact that the flexible working will be the new norm for some time at least. And as can be seen that the demand for flexible spaces is already on the rise. To stay relevant and stick to the changing landscape, operator will have to focus on the improving tenant profile, profitabilities in operational centers by further adding amenities, tech enhancements, and layout changes. There is also a higher focus of customized solutions, including higher flexibility, innovative solutions, uh, the, and the way the deal structure such as reverse officing, fit out, fit out as a service, pay per use model, and all access products among others. Um, the rise of the, uh, there would be also rise in satellite offices and requirement for satellite office means fully furnished office spaces, which have been presently been managed by service providers, more than 100 cities across India. These are supplement to the headquarters offices and are located in different cities. There could be silent features from these that they are, offices are in line with the business centers and provide plug and play facilities. A single contract can be signed to define number of seats and people can use offices in any of branches available throughout in the country. There may not be upper limit of such utilization for these offices. Better IT connectivity, including Wi-Fi, the service provider should be highly um, been doing this, um, should plug and play system and have better connectivity to those places. Importantly, the charges should be Levi, should be put on the basis of the utilization throughout the month. And, uh, and these are the, some of the features which, which I think will help the service provider also and the companies also. Ajay, we, we are all obviously taking serious notes of this. Uh, so thank you for all, all those great points. Uh, uh, so Ashish, what trends have you seen with flex operators in Asia? And how important is it for the flex operators to leverage technology for building and delivering digitally enabled collaborative spaces? So Amit, I think uh, before I talk about technology, one of the things which the flex operators can definitely look at is uh, maybe looking at your design consideration assumptions also, that how do you moving forward can support the new ways of working which we are looking at, right? And when, when I talk about new ways of working, it, it is all those things which you've discussed here. I think technology is one of the things which is going to support those experience, but I think audio visual, uh, touchless connectivity or touch single touch connectivity, let's say in the meeting room experiences, creating those immersive experiences within these spaces also, because uh, I believe employees, if they're coming back mostly for collaboration, then these are the things which they would need in the office spaces, whether it is our own office spaces or it is the uh, co-working spaces. I think uh, one more thing which maybe people will look for is the comfort of home, right? Because they've been working in their home environments for a long time. They would look for that comfort of home within the office space. I think how can we bring those elements in the office space uh, to pull people to the office? Uh, from technology perspective, I think uh, one important thing where technology can pay, play a lot of uh, key role there is uh, how do we bring in that sense of safety for the people who are coming in uh, by using technology and when i say that uh, i mean let's say as an employee uh, coming before i come to the office if i know that i'm able to book or reserve a desk before i reach the office so that i know that the desk is clean before i come in there is a process automated process where if you leave the desk if the message goes to the cleaner and the desk is clean i'm i'm sure we all know there's a lot of solutions which are there in the market but yes we keep piloting but there's going to be like temp permanent solutions in the offices which will give that sense of safety to the employees uh, uh, i think the um, other thing is we talk a lot about air quality right one is to say that hey we've got uh, the right air quality in the office other is to display it in the real time right that's the change in the employee experience if i move into the come into the office space and the first thing i see on a display panel is that hey this is the air quality real time data maintained in the office it gives a much better experience in terms of user rather than somebody telling me that hey we maintain the right air quality so and we're losing a lot of sensors in the office space today but Maybe this data is sitting with the IFM team somewhere. It's not being pulled up to show it to the user. 
and that's where I think we can use technology to consolidate the data and show it to the user to create that experience. Great, great. Thanks, thanks, Ashish. Uh, Bhavya, the final question to you. In your view, what are some of the key innovations that flexible workspace providers need to implement to attract and retain occupiers? So, Amit, um, you know, I am aware of a flexi um, workspace uh, provider in Singapore, a very large one, um, wanted to go IPO. Um, you know, and their only USP and innovation was free beer on Friday. So they've come a long way. The industry has come a long way from, from free beer on Friday. But uh, I believe uh, this, is, this is the time for um, flexible workspace providers to really differentiate using tech and innovation. So if you look at, there would be innovation in design of workspaces and all of us spoke about agility, you know, distributed environments, no shore environment, so to say, of, of work. You know, there will be innovation in how workspace is sold. Um, you know, about two years back, all of us would visit um, and see how the office looks, where will I be sitting, you know, what the design is, all this will have to go virtual, so, and digital first. So that would be another innovation in my view that will come in. Uh, how the space is maintained and operated. Uh, again, tech enabled, can I reserve it well in advance? Do I know it is safe, secure? Once I leave, it will be clean again and so on and so forth. And there are, there are various um, other parameters around maintenance of, uh, and sustainability of, of workspaces. Um, you know, also what's very important is how do you ensure and differentiate using innovation in tech uh, in establishing a continuum between the shared workspaces, the co-working or the co-working spaces to office to home, how do you ensure that there is consistent experience that the user gets across all these three um, locations that he or she may operate from? Then, um, last but not the least, um, innovation around security. You know whether it's physical or cyber. So I believe um, you know these will be the areas where there will be massive innovation, massive uh, investments made by co-working uh, co-work space providers, so to say, to differentiate themselves um, in the market space. Otherwise, it will be free beer on Friday. So, so Bhavya, no free beer at office, but certainly will serve you a great glass of lassi next time you're in our in our space. So over to you, Sumit, on that note. Great, uh, great insights, gentlemen. You know, it was a very, very good uh, you know session so far. Uh, we have some very interesting questions, but I'll make it quick because we're running out of time. Um, so my first question is, uh, uh, Sunit, I would request you to you know uh, take a stab at it. Will companies prefer capex-like business solutions over traditional offices in the coming years? Yes, I think that's a great question, right? Uh, you know, while, while the answer might vary by the size and the affordability of the company, you know, like, like we mentioned, there are certain large corporations who are pretty much cash rich. And if their cost of capital is much lower than what an amortized, you know, workplace, you know, workplace fed out would look like, uh, you know, probably you still want to invest your own money. But, but having said that, uh, I still think that a large chunk of companies would still want to go that way, uh, you know, where you where you want to reduce your capex and have flexible terms. I think the key is flexible terms. As long as that flexibility is baked in, you know, any company, even at a cost of, uh, you know, slight differential on the cost of capital, would still want to go on a capex light model than a capex heavy model. And I'm specifically talking about large footprints, right? If I'm setting up right. a 200 seater office, probably I might not want to do that, right? right? But if I'm setting up a large office, I might want to look at. Got it. Thanks, Sunil. Um, Ravi, uh, there's a very interesting question. Probably you would be the best person to answer it. Um, it says, what are the what are some of the measures CRE uh, stakeholders have adopted to grapple with COVID-induced uncertainties? COVID-induced uncertainties. Yeah, I mean. Um, We've spoken a lot about the COVID-induced uncertainties. One can be the physical form itself within the office. Uh, and we spoke about the 
the air filters and you know the touchless uh, you know technology and and all of that uh, but i think one of the major things uh, i think bhavya or someone mentioned was about the communication um, you know versus commute and and clearly i think uh, what organizations can do is uh employees need uh you know not only clear communication but a policy uh now these policies may be as diverse and uh, may touch upon uh, features like onboarding training uh, you know what the organization is uh, you know looking in terms of collaboration culture um how do who do, how does the organization look to connect with the young workforce uh we spoke about cyber security uh, and finally of course tech Uh, so all of these, uh, I think, are very, very crucial uh, for the CRE uh, stakeholders to make it explicitly clear, not only to the CRE but also communicate right down the line to the employees. Um, employee engagement, for one, is a very, very large umbrella of uh, activities uh, that an organization needs to, uh, you know, uh, embrace uh, and make it an ongoing uh, kind of a feature. So these, I think, are clearly uh, some of the pieces uh, I, I, we could dwell on. employee engagement into so many facets and it could you know straight go into well being and uh, and safety and and all of that and also on the other hand uh, it could go into sustainability of employees in terms of their operations as well as the physical uh, you know the work environment itself so all of these uh, will need deliberation will need uh, detailing out uh, and will will probably find its way into the strategy document of major corporations which Uh, many of them are looking to articulate uh, before they take some serious decisions going forward got it thanks to me i think there's a question on workplace design which ashish just mentioned you know in details so i'll skip that one uh i'll put the last question it's interestingly a plug on you know flex spaces but i'll still ask it um with occupy as expected to focus on more agile workplaces uh, does the future of flex spaces look optimistic and full of potential Uh, let's do it in a different manner. I'll ask every one of you. Let's put it on a scale of one to ten, with ten being highest. We all know it's optimistic, but at what level of of, of optimism, right? Uh, one being lowest, ten being highest. Uh, Ashish, I'll start with you. What's your answer? A scale of one to ten. How will you rank rank it? I would I would say maybe eight. Eight. Okay. Ajay. I think it would be eight. Okay. okay. Suni. uh sunith you are on mute sorry uh you know i would i would go with about a 7 okay uh, ravi yeah i think 7 okay uh bhavya in my view a definite 10 you know okay. this is the future uh, in and it's not just about co co working providers like yourself but uh, i believe that um, the future is not far where competing organizations may settle for common working spaces So I believe it's a definite ten. Right. I mean, I think it's a ten from your side as well. We are biased, but uh, on that Absolutely. note, yeah. Uh, back to you, Amit. Thanks, thanks, Sumit. Uh, so it's been a fantastic sixty minutes with each of you. I personally have learned a lot, and uh, hope the participants have as well. Uh, thank you for all the participants to make this success, and our panel for sharing their candid views. Uh, we are all hopeful that the best ideas are germinated in challenging times. Uh, similarly the workspace the future will be a better place for employers and employees as we adjust to the new normal may we bring the comfort of the home into the office uh, commute less communicate more um, i think there is hope on the horizon that things will turn out much better uh, for the future here is hoping for the best uh, for remaining part of 2021 stay safe and stay healthy thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you everyone bye bye thank you pleasure